What's up guys, War here, and today I'm going to bring you the patch notes for Season 3 of Diablo 4. Let's do it. Okay guys, so the patch notes are finally here. I just got off work, so I got a chance to briefly look at them earlier, but I wanted to kind of bring you all the news so you guys have it here. First, I'm sure other creators have already got that out, but I wanted to do this and get, kind of give my thoughts, especially based on my last or previous video that kind of was a little bit like just shots fired at Blizzard. I know it was a bit harsh, but we do expect a lot of great things from this game, especially when you're so excited to play. But anyway, let's get into the patch notes and check these things out. So Diablo 4 patch notes came out today, right? Earlier, it was about seven hours ago or so, something like that, six hours ago. So I kind of wanted to go over them 1.3.0 on all platforms for January 23rd. So we have a lot to kind of digest through here. I'm gonna try to pick and choose kind of the highlights. I'm not gonna go over every single thing, but I will leave a link of this down in the description below. If you guys have not read through them, please read through them because there's a lot of good changes here. So class updates, developer notes, this is important. Uh, it's important to them because when a player chooses to fully invest in the skill, the payoff is immense. In pursuit of this goal, several of our new unique and legendary items are targeting skills that have yet to reach their full potential. Basically what that means is that, hey, there's a bunch of skills that haven't been used and we want players to use them, right? Because a lot of the skills that have already been used, we've got a lot of payoff, right? Twisted Blades, Lightning Shred, Lightning Storm, you know, uh, Ball Lightning, Hoda, huge payoff. This is basically just saying that we, we have some other skills that we're gonna buff and we want you guys to use them. So we're excited to see what uh, players accomplish with the unique items for the Barbarians. Ren, Druid's Lightning Storm, and Sorcerer Meteor, which I'm really excited to play, guys. Stay tuned because I'm going to kind of just talk about the new Meteor skill and unique because I'm going to be playing Sork first and just kind of talk about how that's really going to impact. It's probably going to be my build of Season 3, Bye Bye Ball Lightning, but Meteor should be pretty sweet. Shout out to uh, Diablo 3. Uh, Talrasha Wizard, it's back, baby. It's back. Okay, so we're also targeting some issues for each class. Necromancer's Cult Leader for minions to hit harder. Barbarians should feel that you're not required to have three shouts for their success. And Sorceress applying Vulnerable with Lightning Spear. This should be really, really cool, actually. So let's kind of go down and just break down some of the new, just overall stuff, right? So this is for all classes, new items. I actually tweeted some of this stuff earlier because it was so good. So the uh, Pain Gorger's Gauntlets, damaging enemies with non-basic skills marks them, and then when a basic skill first hits the enemy, basic skills damage is echoed. Wow, shout out to uh, Druids over here. Um, aspect of adaptability, when below 50% max resource, basic skills generate more, but then when you're above, you deal more damage. This is really, really cool. This is kind of like the ossified essence from necromancer but now everybody's going to kind of have this this is kind of neat because if you're casting at full resource with a max 80 percent increased damage that's huge gains right there let's buff up juggernaut aspect i actually really really like this one if you want to be a freaking tank you can do it so gain up to 1.25 armor because we all know how important armor is especially how the only real way for us to get it is to put disobedience on our amulet uh, so we gain a crap ton of armor, but our evade chance is increased. Don't care about that. Most classes besides like maybe Rogue, Sork, a lot of other builds, you can just kind of just tank through everything. So really, really like that. I tweeted these two out. Big changes to Ring of Starless Skies. Uh, now you're going to get your spending resources reduces your resource cost and increases your damage done. And then the offensive aspect of the expectant damage bonuses now has a five second duration to be used so cool melted heart got changed a lot even through season two so now all seats are, are all stats are increased by two two times normal value kind of good core skill has changed to movement speed which is interesting um i guess this will really help certain builds damage while healthy increased by three times and then the previous power has been now changed you gain 60 max resource and then 75 percent of incoming damage damage drains two resource for every one percent uh, we'll have to really test this and see how this goes, but it seems like a really nice move, especially with the increased move speed. Overpower, I found this one really, really funny, guys, because Overpower, now it was super strong, and now they've nerfed it. 
So they wanted to bring in overpower because it wasn't used. They made it too strong. Now they nerfed it back down. Hopefully this is a good balance. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Now, as far as the barbarian and all the different skills, I'm kind of going to only highlight a few things here, guys. So there's a lot of buff to rend for barbarians. Rend is super strong. It's going to get a huge, nice buff for Ren's bleed. And then, of course, charge is something they highlighted from the dev stream. This is huge. Again, a lot of these buffs are just going to be skills that we inherently never really used. And I know that they track that like leap. Nobody ever really used leap for anything except for when you're leveling up as a barb because it just helps you with mobility to get around the map. So uh, there's a lot of buffs to that stuff. Walking arsenal, gushing wounds, weapon expertise. Um, has been cut by 50%, which is kind of nuts. Um, so there's a lot of big buffs across the board. Barbarian by far has the biggest just blanket of buffs. They made Barbarian really, really strong as if he was not already strong as it is. But Barbarian got a huge buff um, coming into Season 3. So for all you Barb mains out there, you guys got some help. Uh, Druids, the um, rafts I think are going to be really cool. I think the lightning storm stuff is going to be kind of sweet. Appreciate the follow there, Vel. Uh, so lightning storm is getting some big buffs along with the um, unique that we saw. So that rabies getting a buff. Last ray got a nice cooldown. Druid got some pretty decent stuff. Um, damage is increased by cataclysm. Pretty cool. So overall, they got some really nice changes here. Again, the, the some reworks to the spirit boons and then some buffs to the skills. Um, Necromancer, huge buff to the blood stuff. Um, Shatter spirits uh, or the spirit stuff for the spirit. Um, was it bone spirit? It got some really nice buffs there. What is this casting bone spirit? Yeah, I mean, it's pretty cool. It's going to change. This is an um, offensive aspect. It's going to change it into bone splinters, which is kind of cool. Um, might be able to pair this really well with some uh, some other skills, but it seems pretty nice. Um, Iron Maiden, all this stuff got a huge buff. I really think they're going uh, towards the direction of a little bit more melee with the thorns and everything because Druid's got a big buff in thorns as well as their companions. So kind of nice there. Um, Necromancer across the board, it got some, some slight nerfs. Uh, Sever got nerfed, Blight got buffed, Corpse Explosion got nerfed, um, or at least some stuff changed. The base damage and stuff got increased, but the lucky hit got reduced, which kind of sucks. Um, but yeah, it's some really good changes here. I'm not going to go through all of these. They did change some stuff to the Golems um, and the Blood Mages. Again, we're going to have to test this stuff because inherently, since the release of Diablo for the uh, minions have not been super great. So we're going to have to test these new buffs okay uh rogue again overall the rogue got some very blah um upgrades or buffs the biggest changes that came to the rogue is just in the items okay they nerfed twisted blades slightly and then they uh increased or changed wind force sky hunter as well as eagle horn to kind of make or at least attempt to make the bow skills seem more fluid a little bit more fun so we're really going to have to test this out along with the uh key or precision key passive which is basically the main skill for um range stuff for the rogue so uh we're gonna see how this is wind force just lucky hit change sky hunter distance to enemies is now crit damage which is pretty sweet um uh, and then eagle horn again man they could just do so much better now penetrating shot is going to make them vulnerable but then every fourth cast of penetrating shot bounces off walls it really kind of doesn't make a whole lot of sense because with penetrating shot you're not you're not like spamming you know penetrating shot is kind of like a build up and just kind of nuke things on the board so every fourth cast for a chance for it to bounce and do damage i mean it just doesn't seem good on the surface so i kind of feel like it's kind of meh but now let's get to our sork big sork buffs here sork main you're talking to uh Overall, Sork didn't get a lot of buffs. The biggest changes is the Starfall uh, Coronet, which is the unique. So it's really going to make basically Meteors infinite. We're going to talk about this in another video. Um, aspect of Shredding Blades. Ice Blades now has a chance to have uh, apply its vulnerability by 20% and then the in increased duration and increased vulnerable damage. So I really think they're going away of like burn and just meteor stuff and then of course conjuration i know they added that conjuration stuff from or at least for season two and basically nobody played it because it just wasn't strong enough and of course when you got all these other things like ball lightning just you know being at the forefront of 
um, Sorcerers. Kind of made it hard when Conjuration just wasn't strong enough. So what everybody was expecting here is Ball Lightning with the huge nerfs. Enhanced Ball Lightning changed to have its attack rate increased with attack speed up to 25%. So they basically just put a hard cap on this, guys. Um, it was just straight up based on full attack speed. So the more attack speed that you did have, the stronger this was. And then apparently there was a, a bug on top of the Enhanced Ball Lightning um, ability, which caused it to do more damage. So now there's a hard cap on this. And uh, they fixed the bug is what they said. So Ball Lightning nerfed, but we're going to test it. I still think it's probably going to be pretty strong, even with the 25% um, cap. Blizzard. Uh, the condition wall cast over 50 mana has been removed. I kind of like that. And then a huge one here is Lightning Spear because Sorks always have a hard time applying vulnerability. So I think there's going to be some very unique things here with the crit. That's why I say that Ball Lightning probably isn't all the way out. Like it got a slight nerf, but because we're able just to launch our conjurations of Lightning Spears with the kind of build that we had from last season. I think applying that vulnerable damage is going to kind of make up for the difference. We'll see how it goes. We're going to have to do some testing, right? And then there's some elemental conjuration stuff as well as um, a lot of searing heat, searing heat and uh, burning instinct buffs because it looks like we're going all out fire. So we had like season one where it was like all frost, blizzard, ice shards. Season two, we had all lightning, right? Chain lightning, ball lightning. And this season, we're finally getting like elemental conjurer as well as just like full-on burn mode fire mode so i'm really really excited to play a fire mage um uh, item updates uh aspect of shatter stars meteor damage has been changed um to do some more damage staff of liam neeson shout out demon uh increase charge bolt chance to attract enemies this is really cool that build is actually low-key pretty fun ice hard Breus, nobody ever used this but um it's cool that it got a small buff now gameplay activities this is um we already knew about some things. We knew about the Helltide coming, guys. So every hour, I think that's great. Um, I tweeted out about the Distilled Fear. It takes nine, roughly, to... Excuse me. Do a Beast in the Ice dungeon. And they've reworked it. So where now, players will gain a Distilled Fear after completing a Nightmare Dungeon of at least Tier 30 or higher. And then every 10 tiers after Tier 30... There's an increasing chance for the distilled fears to be rewarded. So it's kind of similar to Diablo 3's um, rifts where, you know, you're getting certain drops always. And then as you go up higher, you have more of a chance for like two of them to drop, three of them to drop, etc. Right. And completing tier 90 dun Nightmare Dungeons and Beyond will always grant three. So if you think about this, is that... Between 30 and 90, which is 60 tiers, you're guaranteed one, and then 90 guarantees you three, and there's this chance in between that, so 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, to get one more. So I don't know if this is a dub or not. You have to go by not the RNG chance. You have to go by what you can 100% get. So you have to do nine Nightmare Dungeons to do Beast in the Ice once, which with some item changes, he always drops 925s, uh, especially now. So I guess that's a good trade-off, but we'll have to go in and test and see how often the additional stills drop when you're doing like tier 50s, 60s, 70s, etc. So we'll have to test that. Uh, Petrified Sigil Award for completing will now always grant one Sigil tier higher. So when you're done, you get one higher. That's cool. Scrolls of es Escape will now populate so if you miss one it acts just like legendary items and you'll get them back into your stash stack limit changed legendary will be harder to miss scatum prisms will no longer drop uh it's been reduced which is i guess that's a fine thing uh material cap changed all that stuff's changed um now here is probably a big one that people are going to maybe like and dislike i don't want to make the video go too long but item power changes from world boss so world boss got bigger item power changes so that way it drops more powerful loot as just like they described in the developer note which is nice but now um the boss ladder so now the item powers have changed so depending on the level that you're fighting like in world tier 3 or world tier 4 you have some new ranges okay 
So now Grigor in World Tier 4 can only drop 975 instead of uh, up to 925. Beast in the Ice will always drop up to 925. And then Duriel is always 925. So again, you're going to have to farm Duriel for all your Uber Unique. So it's probably just best to do this. And except for just like farming these guys when you need to do, do them to do Duriel. And then the same thing in uh, Nightmare Dungeons. Okay, so Monsters at level 100. It's now up to 925. Rare is up to 925. And then as you go higher, it makes it, it closes the gap. So anything above 125 gives you a chance for 885 at a minimum to 925. I think this is good. It gives a little bit more purpose to farm Nightmare Dungeons. So we'll see. And then anything above um, tier 90 guarantees 925 no matter what. So if you got a strong enough build to rock, um, you know, T100s or at least T90s, you can always get 925 gear. I think that's really going to make a change for people who want to farm Nightmare Dungeons. I think it's kind of worth it if you're really trying to mid-max a build or get gear for another another class. So we'll see how that goes. This one, I think this is an L, right? Like potion count will no longer be reset after dying and being revived. Kind of an L, but it kind of is what it is. Um, and then there's some other you know user face buffs and changes. Uh, we got Wasa dude coming instead of your mouse, which I think is great. So yeah, guys, overall changes, um, I think we're kind of, you know, Barbarian got a huge buff. Uh, there's some stuff changed. I think Barbarian, Druid got big buffs. Um, Sork did okay. Rogue did okay. And then Necromancer, we'll have to wait and see with Necro. It's hard when you're reading those patch notes to kind of just determine if Necro is going to be great because you have to test out the AI with those minions. But anyway like the video guys comment down below let me know what you guys think about the patch notes and season three what are you playing what's your overall thoughts let me know down in the comments let's get the conversation popping uh don't forget to subscribe guys turn on notifications and as always stay gaming i'll see you guys in the next one peace